By the way, uh, from a hike, the perspective of a hiker, a through hiker, it pays to be near civilization or in civilization on holidays like Easter Sunday, Fourth of July, Thanksgiving. Because what happens is the proprietors of hostels and stuff like that, what they do is they'll have a boon of donations or something like that, maybe leftover hot dogs or whatever, and they know exactly where to go. They know where the hikers are going to be. So, it wouldn't surprise me that after the end of this 24-mile day at Bob People's Place, he, he, he would have something set up. He wouldn't. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know why he would, but I'm just saying. It's Easter. It's there. And, you know, out here. All right. It's 3.37. This is the shelter right here. This is uh this is checkpoint um this is checkpoint Bravo. What's up Ruber? So okay, so this marks 17. Um one more seven will put me to the Cove Road and that'll be Concora and then point two from there will put me in Bob People's house. I'm just gonna take a second and then I should be able to get there long before dark. I mean, dude, it's 3.30 out here. All right. It's 3.45. Let's hit this road out here. That hiker I just cameoed is a southbounder. She said she was checking the weather and it's gonna rain start at eight o'clock tonight and gonna keep on going until, you know, all the, all the more reason to do this 24. I have a roof over my head. Take it uh, and just see what's up tomorrow. Out here. You know, after that long soliloquy about uh, doing big miles and not stopping to smell the roses, I, I, I can't see the, the hypocrisy about me doing these big mile days. But in my defense, ask me how many miles I'm doing tomorrow, okay? And when I did that 28 or 27 to, to uh, uh, Mount Harbor B&B, did I hike out? No. And when I went, when I did that 26 to Uncle Johnny's, how many did I do the next day? Goose egg. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to put people down for doing big miles. All I'm saying is you can do both. You can stop and smell the roses and still, you know, fire on all cylinders and vice versa. So, and, and at the end of the day, I'm not judging. It was never my intention to judge. All I want you to do is just get the full experience. The trail is a lot more than just a raceway. That's all I'm saying. These hostels are a lot more than just a place where you can get your fill, resupply, and leave. They're not gas stations. You know what I'm saying? These are souls. These are people. And there's energy there. There's healing there. There's love there. There's a lot there. I don't want to get back into all that. Anyway, yes, I'm tired. It's, um... It's 546. Okay, maybe I'm not that tired, but anyway, it's it's 546. The road will be coming up here shortly. 
uh, yeah, out here. You know, the irony of it is a lot of people will pass up all these bed and breakfasts and hostels and so forth, talking about budget concerns, not realizing that if they just came correct, you know, uh, just, just, just honest with, with a, a heart of servitude, I mean, not only will, will they be uh, encouraged to stay, but their money wouldn't even be welcome. It wouldn't even be accepted. You know what I'm saying? It'll be like, nah, keep your money. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, we'll, 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 we'll find something. You know what I mean? And that's just, yeah. I don't know, man. It's kind of hard for me to just, I'm saying it, but I don't know if you feel me, you know? Anyway, out here. You know, by and large, the people that are successful in the hostel business, bed and breakfast, stuff like that, um, these are the kinds of people that go into business not to get rich, but to genuinely help out hikers, to make a difference in hikers' lives, to provide something a little bit different, a little special that will enrich a hiker's experience. So with that being the case, when they meet these genuine real good hikers when they meet these people that's like a dream come true for them it's 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 their dream realized at the same time the hiker is like wow this is a genuine person i really can't believe that they're actually here to help me and where the boon comes in is that believe it or not um a good hostel a good bed and breakfast you'd be hard pressed to find the owner you know why Because hikers that had a real connection stop hiking, get off the trail, or come back and work for the hostel. Now, I'm not talking about a fly-by-night work-for-stay. I'm talking about, okay, take Mountain Mountain Harbor, for example. Um, There's at least four people on the staff, you know, give or take, and even through the years, hikers were like, man, even I did it. I'm going to pull over, and I'm going to work for these people because they're good people, and blah, 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 blah. And so, basically, it helps the hostels out when they meet genuinely good people, and then those people stop, and then they work for the hostel. So, basically, that's what makes the community, not money, okay? What makes the community is love, is the common unity in trying to to facilitate a good experience for everybody. And if some money is made, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, that was never the the um the uh, goal. All right. Yeah. Out here. I find sites like this disturbing. I don't know why. I mean, yeah, somebody else may say, oh, it's rustic, oh, it's nostalgia. Nah, that's just spooky. Yeah, I wouldn't sleep in that if it was raining. Just saying. That's rather creative. I guess I'm at mile 420. But think about it, 420, right? They're like, take a smoke. Okay, I'm at the road. So you got two options. You got Black Bear Resort, which is here. That's just like a straight up hostel. And then over here, you have uh, over here, you have Kinkora, which is Bob People's Place. That's more like a hostel based off of donations, honor system, 0.2 miles. Uh, to the left as you're facing north. That's where I'm going, down this road. So, uh, seven years ago, in 2015, I hit this road right here, broken, in the heart of darkness. It was like 845, pitch black. And I hobbled down to Bob People's place, and I just sat there and I licked my wounds. And it's funny because, uh, I I had a bag of Oreos that I was like suckling on and I got a bag of Oreos right now, but uh But today, you know seven years later, I'm gonna call this hike Well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna call this hike a reckoning, you know a vindication for that uh, For that experience that I had so I can like take that memory trash it and be like I remember when I did 24 and hit Kinkora strong, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 
in one of my, I want to say raps, but in one of my poems, um, I was saying that uh, basically the, the line goes, here's my mantra, try, fail, repeat. That's what I do. You know, that's just my philosophy. If it's something that you need to get done, then keep trying until you do it. It's just that simple. Now, I made it to the road. It's no big deal. I got where I was going, but I want it to be better. I want to finish strong because the stronger you finish, the more embedded the memory, you know, the more honor you get to take with you as opposed to the more horrible the experience, the more traumatic the experience, the more it breaks you down in terms of PTSD and shock and stress and blah, blah, blah. I know I'm babbling. Anyway, out here. By the way, I am not going to call that hike easy. Uh, and I'm not going to say I'm feeling great. But at the end of the day, what determines the degree of difficulty is not the terrain. It's the hiker. Okay? It's your state of mind. It's your preparedness. It's your physical readiness. It's all that. I'm so, some days, like I said, what I'm feeling like Zeus, I, it's just like, I, I'll say something like, Oh, the trail was gravy. That's an easy hike. 28 miles. Nah. Nah, don't get it twisted. That's just, that's just me talking through the energy that I felt. And I just felt superhuman at the time. Uh, even with all that rest and the nice breakfast that I had, I, I think I'm heavier. I, I know I'm heavier than 55. And I wish they wouldn't have asked me to weigh it because that sticks in my head now. But at the end of the day, I, I, I know I'm top heavy because I'm carrying food from the hostel, but I will eat good tonight and I'm gonna make a hot plate. You know, I'll have something hot in my belly. And tomorrow, we'll do an easy seven to the hostel. And if you're saying, oh my God, this guy, all he does is go from hostel to hostel. In my defense, as much as I wanted to give um, Mountain Arbor my, my, my hard earned money, that was, that was my intention, okay? Um, it's not my fault Mary's daughter remembered me and they woke up me with all open arms and they're like, nah, you do whatever you want, it's all good. And my heart was in the right place. And so I got a little extra to spend, but at the end of the day, I need to cut movies. So I'm not saying, oh, I need to take a day at this hostel. It's just seven miles away. If I can go in, drop a, you know, check their internet, everything's cool, then, you know, Dude, grab a candy bar, do what I gotta do, drop a movie, and leave. We'll see. But remember what I told you. If there's an opportunity for me to connect with people, then why not? It's a seven mile day. And so what if I stay? I, I certainly have some extra funds, seeing as to how Mountain Arbor took care of me. So, you know, you gotta look, you gotta do long algebra here. You gotta do the math, see it all for what it is. Okay. Oh yeah, check this out. Um, that's a familiar scene. I, I know this horse. You know? Some things stay the same. It even smells horsey. Alright. Now, the last time I was here, the hostel was in poor disarray. I mean, Bob Peoples is only one man. I get it. Uh, but somebody read in Gut, gut Hook that uh, somebody had a great experience. And da 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 And so I'm kind of interested regardless of the state of play, I'm staying. It's going to be raining here at 8 o'clock. At worst case scenario, I will pitch my tent under his awning. But this is home for tonight. I hope in my heart that everything's good. I want everything to be good. I want the hikers that come here to have a good experience. And I want Bob People's name to live on in servitude. Like, hey, that's a good guy. He's always there for the hikers. And from where I'm coming from, that's the energy that I've been feeling. So let's see what's up out here. By the way, the way I understand it is Bob People was retired Air Force. He was actually a pilot. And um, ever since he got out, he's just been spending the lion's share of his time in life just doing the trail. You know, he sponsors hardcore. In 2005, what he does is he'll go break trail. He'll, and, and I was a volunteer as well. We'll go out and, and, and we'll just maintain trail. We'll put down rocks. We'll move logs. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. But if you do it, he will let you stay at his hostel 
well, you stay, he'll let you stay at his hostel for free, even though it's open for donation. But what he would do is he would take you for ice cream as, as you're going home. But at the end of the day, it's all trail magic. It's hikers helping hikers doing what they can for the trail. All right. The front part is his house and the hostel is to the rear. It looks like nature has claimed it for real. I don't see any hikers on the porch. Nothing. It's like a ghost town. Oh, look at the cat. Somebody just woke up. Ah. So, you see the cat food. He loves his cats. These are showers, or at least they always were. See, bathrooms, shower, it's clean. This one's locked. This one's locked. We got here. That's a washer in there. Um, let me see if there was a toilet. We got here. Yeah, I they got a toilet. Let's flush the toilet. Let's see if everything works. All right, all right. Houston, we have plumbing. Hello, you. You look so cute. All right, let's go inside. Oh, wow, it's clean. It's clean. And I guess I'm the only one here. It is a ghost town out here. Okay, I turned on some lights. So you have pots and pans. You have silverware in the drawer. The stove works. You have a refrigerator. I think there's eggs in there. You have a freezer. I checked the water. The water works. You have a bunkhouse right here. You have a microwave right there. I checked it. The microwave works. Now, this is the problem that hikers have. You see the feces, all the cat poop and stuff like that. So basically, um, it's not clean. But at the, at the, let's, you know, in his defense, he's not asking you to pay for anything. You know, this is more like, Hikers try to police up what they can. Only reason why I have the door open is because I'm letting in some fresh air. Turn on the lights. Okay. Now, I've always taken this private room for myself. This is where I slept last time, back when I was licking my wounds. This door was closed, and most hikers don't know that that's a room. So what they do is they just don't, don't touch it and not understand it. But I'm going to put my stuff back here in this room. This, um, <clears throat> well... I don't know if I can open the room or not, but we'll we'll just see though. I mean, me with me, I'm all about ventilation and all the windows are closed, but it is kind of cold too. So I may not sleep in this room, I may just sleep on the couch, but only because only because of ventilation. You know, you don't want to have all this fresh air, breathing all this fresh air for all this time, right? And then you 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 go in one place and spend Eight, eight hours sleeping, breathing in mold. That matters. You will wake up uh, sick. That happens to me before. So, where an average person will be worried about, oh, what's the what's the fire exit? You know, when they come into places like this, my attitude is, okay, what's what's the degree of circulation? You know, as far as the air goes. I can't even close that door. Well, I'll just open it up for now. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to chill. I mean, I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook out of my pack. Um, I think I saw some canned goods. I'm going to see if he has eggs in the refrigerator. And I'm going to, I'm going to chill. If the, if the water is hot, I'm going to take a shower. And there you have it. And, and I'm going to cut a movie. Because as you can see, he has power. So there are places to charge. And I do need to charge my electronics. So, 24 miles. Uh, Easter Sunday. Day. Day uh, 37. April 17th and for the record remember how I told you that this place has never been a ghost town What I'm thinking is Bob Peoples took any hikers that were here into town But the problem with that is I see no evidence of packs being left behind But but I'll keep you informed, but I've never been here by myself. This is this is almost eerie. Okay out here 
if I'm not mistaken, that's well water. It's fresh, so you can drink from the sink. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to boil two pots of water to humidify the air, you know, and, and put some, put some uh, heat inside here. Um, you know. And guess what I'm having for dinner? There's pancake mix, there's syrup, and check this out. Eggs. Now, remember when I when I told you I was going to eat out of my pack? I won't be eating much. I am a very good cook and I'm going to hook it up. So, out here. Feeling warmer already. These cookies will not last the night. I'm tired of packing them. I should have ate them two days ago. Uh, I found some, a can of Progresso soup. And there's a hiker box here. I can go through there. I'm trying to find some condensed milk. Um, you know, because as you know, we're going to make pancakes today tonight for, for dinner. That's a cast iron skillet. Nothing does it better than that right there. Another reason why there's no one here is because uh, he doesn't advertise. You know, you look in the books today, it doesn't say hostile at Kinkora, come on down. You know what I'm saying? Because hikers can really trash places. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if they think it's quote unquote free. And I don't mean to to just bash the community. I don't mean hikers in general, but let, let me just say that, you know, I, I've, I've, I, you know, it's a mixed bag. I've seen all types. This is the cleanest I've ever seen this hostel. And you know why it's so clean? It's probably, there's no hikers here. You know, case in point, you saw how clean that bathroom was, same thing. So right now it's just a, a best kept secret. This is like a secret place right now. I got it all to myself out here. Honestly, the only thing I need to charge right now, cause I just left the bed and breakfast, is a uh, battery for the for the camera so that's being done and um, now I'm just gonna go through my pack lay everything out and then start cooking everywhere you go you see cat food and water um, the problem is there are no litter boxes but the thing is um, you want to see cats because the cats are the reason why there's not a mice problem here or rats because as you see, there's open sources of food with hiker boxes and things of that nature laying all around. But the cats make sure that there are no mice so he can feed them open like that and don't worry about anything else. So there's a balance out here. I'm making tea since we have sugar and the house is starting to warm up and the air is getting cleaner now because of the water sterilizing the air. You know, it's funny. You know how I'm always like, hikers are like Marines. They're everywhere. I just wish I can get a place by myself. Oh, here I am in this campsite and I think I'm alone. And oh, here comes another hiker. Well, who'd have thought I'd have the whole hostel to myself? And, and, and it's relatively early. I passed several gentlemen that said they were coming here, but everybody can't do 24. So we'll just see what happens. I don't want to jinx it, but... I guess my my Easter present <laughs> will be to have a whole hostel to myself. Go figure. How is that even possible? We'll see. Out here. All right, I'm all laid out. I got my Crocs on. My, my feet are bare. I can chill. Only reason why I haven't rent, made a beeline for the shower is because I just left the hostel. And I'm not saying I'm not taking a shower tonight. But what I want to do right now is drink and eat. So, th first things first. Um, I'm, a, I'm about to recharge my iPod as well before I plug my computer in out here. Yes, the whole house smells like cat pee, but what I'm doing with the with the uh, water and keeping the door cracked, I'm airing it out. You know what I'm saying? But don't don't get it twisted. This is a roof over my head with electricity, stove, food. I'm home. Okay, out here. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm going through the hiker's box because I know I need powdered milk if I'm going to make some pancakes. So, I'm still doing my little scavenger hunt out here. Okay, I'm all laid out. Got everything done. I have my iPod charging. I got my camera charging. Uh, I found what looks like powdered milk. I say what looks like powdered milk simply because powdered milk looks a lot like laundry detergent. So, you know, you still got to give it the smell test, dip a finger in it, things like that. So, yeah, I already checked it. This is powdered milk. Um, even though I know that the water's portable, it's still coming out of rusty pipes. I know this building is old, so I'm giving myself just enough water to hike out on. I'm, I'm only going seven miles, but that's really not the point. Once I hit the woods again and get some fresh, clear water, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to fill up there. The uh, water that I'm boiling now and making tea, I'm making sweet tea, but I'm making it hot. 
I'm not making it cold. That way I can sip it and warm myself up at the same time while, while still getting my liquid, re liquid requirement because I do need to drink more, okay? So that's where we are right now, out here. So I got two Nalgene's of steaming hot tea. I put cream in one of them. I put some powdered milk in one of them. I, I learned that in Italy. They, they put cream in their actual tea. Tastes good too. Out here. Remember the, the first hostel sign I showed you that said Big Bear Hostel, 0.3 miles? Well, it could be that hikers came down here, they saw this hostel, and they were like, yeah, and then walk 0.2 miles back up and then go to the other hostel that's, at, that's obviously in business and are there to make a dollar. Uh, like I said, I know Bob Peoples, I know what's here, and I know what my skill sets are. So I'm sitting here making me some Progresso soup with these cans of vegetables. Like I said, I, I, I got the house, you know, smelling like hot tea and sugar. I'm going to make me some pancakes. And if I have the, the, the whole place to myself, then so be it. You know what I'm saying? But it, it just, just depends on your skill set at the, at the end of the day. Out here. Okay, just open up the computer and there is no internet at Kinkora. But I got my music because I have my computer. And uh, I can still make movies and then when I get to the next hostel, seven miles from here, I can post them. So I'm slowly turning this into a home. Okay, by the numbers, we have butter, we have milk, we have pan um, uh, bacon powder, and we have pancake mix. And we have eggs. It's time to make some pancakes. And meanwhile, we have a hot Easter soup just simmering. Right? First course is done. <clears throat> Doesn't that look delicious? It's like a soup hash, almost. Now I'm about to get cracking on these pancakes. <clears throat> Your boy got skills in the kitchen, just so you know. Like, for real. All right, it's 8.37, and uh, we can finally sit down to eat. I got some hot cakes here, okay? Got yeah, some log cabin syrup. I got a little hash here with some fresh vegetables and chicken. Now, where I come from, you don't eat until the kitchen's clean. Here you go. And I made the point to make the kitchen cleaner than it was before I came in, okay? That's, that's just the way we do it, you know, where, where I'm from. Now I'm about to sit down. I got I got I got two things of iced tea, and it's still warm, so it'll it'll heat me up, you know. And uh, even though I'm only doing seven days, seven miles tomorrow, I'm not trying to be up all night. So I'm gonna knock this out. I'm gonna eat right, and then I'm gonna do some video editing after I after I eat, and maybe I can make a make a movie to save some time. But um, yeah, 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 we're gonna do that. All right, out here. Oh, by by the way, by the way. I guess the Lord's looking out. There's still nobody here. I'm still by myself. So I guess my Easter present will have the whole hostel to myself. We shall see. But if anybody shows up, of course, I'm going to break bread with them. Why not? It's Easter Sunday. At least I got dinner already made for them. But like I said, I don't think there's anybody crazy enough to, to night hike here. As you recall, I hit that road at 845 um, in 2015. So... And I, I don't know, I probably came running up here at 9 o'clock. So there are crazy people like me, but we just going to have to see. But should they show up, I got them out here. Hey, what's up? All right. It's 11.05. <laughs> See, that's the thing about video editing. Oh my God, people don't realize, man, I, I am working, all right? I'm hiking and I'm working, please donate. Now then, um, it's 11.05, I cut one movie, I got 30 minutes into a, to, to this movie here. Um, I'm done eating, I found a heater. Uh, what I'm about to do now, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm gonna take a shower. Man, the water's hot, I'm gonna do that. Um, and then I'm going to bed. As you know, I'm only doing seven miles tomorrow. So if I get up a little, wait, well, who am I kidding? I'm still going to get up at first light. That's just what I do. So yeah, I'm going to take a shower and then I'm going to bed. Um, 
so we're going to conclude the and by the way i'm still alone and uh there's like a pancake and a half left in the refrigerator mostly i put i didn't want to be a glutton and i saved that for anybody that should come if nobody comes then my breakfast is already set up for tomorrow um yeah and so we're just gonna call it easter sunday today was a good day 24 miles uh and I did it in pretty good time. I beat my last record. Not that this, not that it's a contest, but um, you can't manage what you don't measure. And so I can get a gauge on how I am this season. You know, seven years later, given my age, to just see how I'm doing. And I guess I'm doing well. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna bring this to a close. Happy Easter. Uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Okay, we're going to close day 37, April 17th, out here. Good morning. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's 6.40, April 18th, day 38. I slept all right. Um, I left that light on because... In, in situations like this, uh, given this cabin and, and the fact that it's probably been in a standing state of, of abandonment for a minute, total darkness gives little critters and stuff permission to come out. So even with that light on, when I was asleep, something came out here and did that. It's just like, I, I don't know, maybe it was making a nest or something. Um, so there's that. And uh, there were, I don't know if there were cats outside fighting or if they were just tracking down mice or whatever. I don't know. But hey, I slept as good as can be expected. Um, I'm going to pack up. Uh, I'm going to nuke these, uh, these two pancakes that I have. And I'm going to eat that and uh, wash up. Well, actually, I'm going to wash up. Anyway, uh, I'll, be, I'll be on the road shortly uh, out here. It appears as though I'm stuck with these Oreos one more night. I ate a few, but you know, that can't be my only uh, means of sustenance. Not in a, in a situation where I got a kitchen. So it's just a few more left. I'll pack it out. Okay, this is me supporting the system that made my stay here possible. And I appreciate it. I'm glad it's here, like for real. Now, you may say to yourself, you may say to yourself, why doesn't he have a lock on that box? Because uh, I've, I've uh, been here several times, and when he goes out of town, he'll put a lock on the box. And what happens is, I, I don't want to say hikers, I, I don't know, but I have come in here and seen the lock broken. Not this particular box, but the lock broken, broken off where somebody just went in and took the money. Now, uh, at 4.30, someone came in... Uh, put down a new can of cat food and walked out i'm gonna assume that was him i know his profile so uh he's so i know he's here put the money in the thing now uh i'm about to i had some leftover pancake mix so i put it inside one of these empty syrup deals but the, here's the thing no one's gonna know what this is and they're gonna throw it out and i don't leave nothing on the table so i'm gonna make some pancakes use the and and, and then uh discard the rest and uh hike out so still working on it i'm all packed up i'm just gonna fry up these cakes right here and roll out right now it's uh 7 15 out here you leave the last pancake in the pan and then you put the rest in there and so the heat of the pan itself caramelizes the syrup so this is a nice hot meal because the pan is so hot so with every single bite it's just going to be like caramel goodness Okay, clean the kitchen. Uh, I left my leftover pancakes from last night in the refrigerator for the next hiker. That's just what you do. You look out, you pay it forward. I took the mix because I know no, no one would know what that was. And I made me some fresh pancakes with that. So whoever comes behind here is going to have something in that refrigerator. Um, I'm just going to lace up my boots and head out. It is 733. As you know, I'm only doing like right now I'm at mile marker 421. The hostel is at mile marker 428. And so we'll go from there, about seven, eight miles out here. Oh, this is the, this, this stretch of the trail that's coming up is my favorite. Oh my God. You're going to see waterfalls. You're going to see, uh, just canyons of, of just rocks and stuff. And they said it was going to rain, but I got to tell you, I didn't, I didn't notice anything. <clears throat> oh, 
It's raining. Ah, eh, well that kind of sucks a little bit. But anyway, I'm just gonna suit up in my rain gear now that I can see that it's raining and head out, out here. Before I go, I just want you to appreciate the volume of people that Bob Peoples has helped over the years. I mean, it's on the ceiling. The whole cabin is littered with photos. And for every photo you see, there's probably five where the picture was never taken, such as myself, that there isn't a photo on the wall. But it just goes for days and days and days. And anyway, that's just the kind of person he is. Those are the kind of people you touch. And this is why he'll keep this cabin open for anybody that needs it until it just falls over flat, you know? Um, people don't understand that you need the cats because the cats keep the mice away. But all, but they can't get past the fact that, oh, it smells like cat urine, da 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 I mean, and I guess it does, but you know what? I, I can't say beggars can't be choosers because it's more than that. But like I said, it just depends on what what you're comfortable with and your skill set. All right. Um, so as we say goodbye, uh, there are there are rain there, There's rain and then there are thunderstorms. This is just rain. I'm not gonna suit up for this right here. I'm gonna head out. And we're gonna get on with the remains of the day. It is 7.45. Let's get cracking out here. Okay, it got a lot harder with the rain, so I pulled over, suited up. Um, you're just gonna have to take my word for it as far as the beautiful stretch that's coming up. Uh, if the rain lets up, then it probably will. Maybe you can get some uh, shots and I can get out of all this. But it's cold anyway, so I actually don't don't mind putting on the rain gear. So, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, Bob Peoples, I, I passed him on the street. Um, uh, he, was, he was asking me if I needed a ride into town and this, that, and the other. You know, we just caught up for, for a second. I, I said, hey, I got some. I noticed you didn't have a lock on your money box. I put some money in there. He's like, yeah, no big deal. If you need anything, let me know. And so, uh, yeah, he, he looks healthy. Uh, appears to be sound of mind. It's all good. All right, let's get cracking out here. These rocks are slippery, and it's a lot of them. That noise you hear is Laurel Falls just roaring. I feel like the last man on earth. Nobody here. Laurel Falls. Now this is where it gets perilous. This is the trail. Look how close it is. The rocks, how close to the water. And now the rocks are slippery. And so one slip, you're in that cold water being, you know, shoved downstream with a pack on your back. Man, it's crazy. And because the rocks are wet, you know it's slippery. Can you sense the danger though, you know? It's amazing. Look how close. Yes, this is the trail. This close to the water's edge. And doing this on wet rocks is not easy. And you know what? It's not that the rocks are slippery, but you think they are. And because you think they are, guess what? All right, I'm putting this camera up. I gotta get serious out here. <laughs> 